I've just returned from a very exhilarating week in New York, uh, attending a number of events there, uh, which I think are going to be truly momentous in terms of changing the narrative globally on tackling the impacts of climate change. Um, I spent uh, Saturday afternoon with a very interesting group of uh, community workers in South Bronx called South Bronx Unite, led by a charismatic leader called Michael Jordan, Michael Johnson, who uh, has been organizing the community there who have been affected by Hurricane Sandy and working on the waterfront and fighting against uh, envir environmental injustice from waste management companies and other uh, industrial giants in the region. It was uh, an exhilarating experience and they also had a very uh, entertaining band and street theater group there. So that was uh, very interesting and it was amazing how much we had in common uh, with the between Bangladesh and the people of the South Bronx. In the evening, I was invited by the Bangladesh Environment Network uh, to address a gathering of Bangladeshis living in the Jackson Heights area of Queens about the issues of climate change and Bangladesh in particular, and also to organize them to join the People's March on Sunday, where I joined the Bangladesh Environment Network, who are part of the Bangladeshi group, who are part of a South Asian group in the front lines of the march at the, uh, on Sunday uh, in New York. Uh, I also had a number of colleagues uh, from uh, the International Center for Climate Change and Development who live in the area who brought a banner and we marched under the ICAP banner as part of the South Asia group. It was a, a long, five hour long, grueling march. Uh, well over 300,000 people altogether. We filled up Sixth Avenue uh, with banners and music and it was a wonderful experience but exhausting as well. On Monday, um, I went and met a number of the incoming ministers from the least developed countries, from Bangladesh, Nepal, Benin, uh, the Gambia, to brief them about uh, the upcoming climate summit on Tuesday, where the heads of state uh, came in and spoke. At the opening ceremony, we had a very moving uh, poem by uh, a civil society activist and poet from the Marshall Islands uh, that got a standing ovation. And then we had heads of state from the US, President Obama, President Hollande from France, made a co commitment for a billion dollars uh, to help climate change and the least developed countries heads, uh, the Prime Minister Hasina of Bangladesh, the uh, President of Ethiopia, the Prime Minister of Nepal all made excellent speeches showing that the LDCs are no longer just victims but they are actually leading the fight in tackling the impacts of climate change. So that was very pleasing to see them uh, take that changing the narrative on climate change from becoming passive victims to becoming leaders of action. And as I uh, return back to um, from New York, reflecting on, on the week. Um, it's too early to tell, but I think that we may well have uh, made a turning point in three senses. Firstly, linking up uh, the bottom up with the top down, leaders of the world and people from the streets. Many of the leaders in their speeches referred to the march. Secondly, in getting many more actors on board to take actions, particularly the business and investment community who are now started the ball rolling on divesting out of coal and fossil fuels. That's a very good sign. And thirdly, momentum going into the UNFCC negotiations, upcoming conference of parties in December this year in Lima, and following that, the conference of parties next year in December in Paris, where we hope to have a new agreement. And that will be the final proof of the pudding of whether we've actually achieved anything or not this week in New York.